Hey everybody, it's the Herb Guy with the Elder Herb Shop, and welcome to Where Science Meets Nature. In this episode, we'll be discussing the medicinal value of plant resins that are commonly burned as incense, but they have even more surprising uses you may not be aware of. I'll only be discussing four of them today, mainly because that's all we currently have on hand, but there's many more plant resins out there. All you gotta do is just do a little bit of research. So what the heck am I even talking about when I say plant resins? Well, simply put, plant resins is the sticky sap that leaks out of trees and shrubs when they've been damaged. It's most easily noticed on pine trees, and if you've ever had it on your hands, you'll know what a mess it can be. It sticks to everything. As a side note, saps are flammable, and they, uh, they work really well as campfire starters. Now, plant resins have been used for thousands of years all over the world for medicinal purposes, and some of them have very powerful antiseptic and antimicrobial properties meaning that they kill viruses, bacteria, and fungi. Okay, so to begin with, I'll discuss two resins you may have already heard of, frankincense and myrrh. Now, at one point in time, they were both worth their weight in gold, literally. Initially, the trees were rare and difficult to find, and people, at that point in history anyway, hadn't quite gotten to the point of cultivating these trees in large quantities. Now, it didn't take long for them to do that, though, and as a side note, did you know that both frankincense and myrrh trees are both related to the olive tree? For the most part, frankincense and myrrh were used as status symbols and played an important part in our early history. Not only were they valuable in religious ceremonies, funerals, magical rites, and other spiritual events, frankincense and myrrh also played an important part in medicinal history. Now, from a medicinal standpoint, trees and pol poultices were made for infectious wounds, toothaches, digestive issues, and many other medical conditions. And on top of that, the resins were often burned as incense during ceremonies to ward off banned energies and to drive off demons or other malevolent spirits. And a blend of both resins was used in temples to ward off and prevent the spread of infectious and contagious diseases. Now, with that being said, is there any scientific proof that either of these resins have any medicinal value? Well, as it turns out, there's a ton of evidence that both of them live up to the hype. Now, in regards to myrrh, um, people have used it mostly for oral health. It's known to be an effective treatment for gingivitis and other oral bacterial and fungal conditions. But there's even a patented drug named Mirazid. It's made directly out of the plant and sap, and it's used to treat trichinomi trichinomiasis, easy for me to say, which is a fairly common sexually transmitted disease that affects about eh, 3 million people a year. Now, when myrrh resin is burned as incense... See if we can get a good picture of it. Now when it's burned as incense, the smoke is shown to be effective at killing microbes that are on exposed surfaces. So like bacteria or viruses or, or fungus that, that's on areas. Um, it, it does, in clinical trials, has shown to, to kill those. Now frankincense, even though it's a different plant and it smells a lot different when it's burnt, um... It's used the same way as myrrh. It has very similar properties. You see the tears. These are typically sold as frankincense tears because the, the sap is just broken off in small pieces for the most part. This is how we end up processing them, um, what they look like when we're all done. This is myrrh cut and sifted. Myrrh ground, even though it's from a different batch, um, kind of a fine powder. You know, frankincense comes in a few different colors. Got some brown in there. But for the most part, it's a really nice light yellow. I know it's hard to see. Not the best camera. Frankincense ground. Because it's a resin, if it gets warm, um, they will coagulate, make little balls, and you have to break them apart before you can use them. Um, another popular resin that they have is copal. Let me get these out of the way real quick. It looks a lot like frankincense, as you can tell. It's light yellow. Um, native to South America. Um, there are several different varieties. Uh, you have rich dark copal, which is this one here. Let's see if I can break it. 
And when it's broken, it's got a nice crystalline surface. You can see the dark brown. And then they have white copal, which we don't have. It's a little bit more rare, hard to get. Um, but it's been used for thousands of years as well. And it's from the exact opposite side of the world as frankincense and myrrh. Kind of an interesting coincidence. Um, as you can see, I, I only have two different kinds today. I have the rich dark copal. And you can see some of the some of the dark is mixed in with the light. Um, for the most part, though, it's just simply called copal resin. And as the sap is harvested, it, it resembles melting glass. And when it's broken open, as you saw, um, it's about as shiny as glass, too. Uh, the darker brown nugget, it's often referred to as rich dark copal, and it's typically sold separately. Uh, it, isn't, it isn't as common in the yellow as, as the yellow, but it's still fairly, fairly abundant, so it's not really expensive at all. Um, just like frankincense and myrrh, copal has played an important role in the spiritual life of early South American culture. Though, you know, <laughs> frankincense and myrrh didn't play a role in South American culture. Uh, it was burned during high rituals to ward off evil spirits, to cleanse and purify spaces, and to draw positive energy. The ground resin was used as a preservative during mummification, and even as a food preservative. Um, on a medicinal level, copal resins and oils are often used to treat pain, and inflammation, arthritis, rheumatism, colds and flu, skin tumors, skin tags, and sexually transmitted diseases. Now, like frankincense and myrrh, copal is also a powerful sanitizer that is shown to be extremely effective in killing airborne and exposed microbes like viruses and bacteria. In fact, copal resin is even used in today's medicine as a bone cement that is more effective than the leading pharmaceutical at reducing biofilm and preventing infections during the healing process. Oh, and I almost forgot. In South America, copal is still used as a food preservative. Only it's natural. This is how we usually get it in larger chunks. Like that. Fairly easy to break. Shiny in the middle. Process it down to two different sizes. We have cut and sifted. And like the frankincense, it's ground. It's got a real sweet aroma when you burn it as an incense. Save the best for last. A lot of people have heard about it. Most people don't know its background or what it's used for. This is a chunk of dragon's blood. It's a resin like all the others, but it's processed a bit differently. And though I hate to do it, I'm not going to, I don't want to break it. When they're broken, it does turn, I mean, it's almost like glass. When it gets wet, it'll dye your fingers um, red. Kind of shiny. We get it in bigger chunks like that. Process it down to look like this. Now, when they harvest dragon's blood, large quantities are gathered, and then the, res the resin is kind of heated up um, to its melting point, but not to where it burns. And they'll put it in large sheets. I mean, this is just really a tiny chunk of what the large sheets are. And you can see by comparison, it's pretty big. Um, that'd be an interesting one to burn for sure. Now, once we receive it, we break it down. We have some cut and sifted. And of course the ground. Still kind of shiny when it's ground, kind of cool. Um, Now ours is labeled, it's labeled as a tea because it's food grade and it's used by some people as a tea. However, most people who buy it from us use it as an incense. Um, now some of its non-medicinal uses in modern days is it's used as a, as a dye and it's also used as a base for a lot of uh, natural based cosmetics. Medicinally, Dragon's Blunt is showed to help with digestive disorders such as Crohn's and IBS, um, for skin rashes and legions to stop bleeding, both internal and external, and uh, to help heal wounds. And just like myrrh, it also has some patented pharmaceutical drugs made from it, one of which helps treat diarrhea in AIDS patients, hence the digestive disorders. Now on an antiviral level, dragon's blood resin smoke has shown in several studies to kill exposed viruses and viruses in mice, but I wasn't able to find any that were done on humans. That doesn't necessarily mean there weren't any studies done on humans, it just means I wasn't able to find any. Um, so, in essence, 
<laughs> pun intended, we have learned that some plant resins have been used for thousands of years for medicinal and spiritual purposes, and that they're still being used today for both spiritual and medicinal purposes. Um, I've left links to several studies that include the information include the information that I provided in this video. Um, if you've liked the content, please consider, consider giving it a like and a share, and don't be shy about leaving a comment in the comment section below. Now that I've finished this rather lengthy video, expect me to be able to keep up with my at least one video a week plan, which means you can subscribe and see how much better these will get, or uh, <laughs> worse, whichever the case may be. This is the Herb Guy, signing off.